Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool horizontal lollipop chart. And I did another video about how to make a vertical lollipop chart, and those are a little bit easier uh, to use or to create in Excel, but the horizontal lollipop just takes a little bit more hacking on the back end. So I want to kind of show you how we can do this. It's a really great alternative to a regular bar chart. Of course, most of the data that we have, especially if you're visualizing categorical data or survey rating data like this is, a bar chart is going to do exactly what it needs to do, but a horizontal lollipop like this is a little bit more visually engaging and kind of interesting. Add some interest to whatever your report is or your slideshow, your presentation, and I think your audience will really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up and show you what the source data looks like, and we're going to go ahead and create this from scratch. So here are each of the items that I had on my survey that were being rated. This is my survey data here. And then you'll see that I need to create this extra buffer column that I'm calling label buffer. This isn't data that we're actually going to show in the chart, but it's going to be how we set up our data labels. And you can see that it's, an, it's a direct copy from the survey rating data. Now you could just go in here and type every single rating if you wanted to. So 45%, 55%, or the other trick that I like to do is create a formula. It's not really even a formula. You just go into this cell, go up here into the formula bar and type equals, and then you point to the cell that you wanna copy. And in this case, that's gonna be D4. So then I'm gonna push enter. And now whatever is in cell D4 is going to show up in cell E4. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this to copy that formula down. And Excel, of course, is responsive so that it points to every cell as it goes down. If you look up in the formula bar up here, and I go down, I click down the cells, you'll see that each of the cells is updating based on this primary column here of data. So that's a pretty cool trick if you didn't know that one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my chart. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and select all my source data right here. Go to the Insert tab, go up to the Bar Chart menu. I'm gonna insert a 2D horizontal bar chart. You can see the bar chart looks just like we're used to seeing. The two series of data, they're exactly the same as they should be because that's what my columns of data are here. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up some things from the chart first. I'm gonna go ahead and put the title over there. I'm gonna click on the legend and get rid of it. We don't need it. We're not gonna need the X axis because we're gonna directly label our bars. And so now we have a nice clean bar chart. I might go ahead and um, maybe adjust the gap width just a little bit. So right click on any of the series, click on format data series and your format data, data series menu pops up right here. Over here in the gap width, it's set to default at 182. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to maybe 100, just a little bit less. And that decreases the width between the bars you can see there. All right, so now I'm gonna set up my labels. So I'm gonna click on this series of data here, the teal bars, and you can see when you click on these individual bars, it will show you which column of data they're pulling from. So when I click on the teal series, that's the label buffer. When I click on the blue series, that's the survey rating. So I want my labels to be here in the teal series. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cl uh, right click and add data labels. Now the data labels show up here on the end, but I'm gonna adjust them uh, with the format data label menu to put them inside the base of the bar here. So go over to the format data label menu, click on the little bar chart icon, go down to label position, and I'm gonna go click on inside base. Now you can see the labels moved into the base. Now they're showing the actual X value, the value of the data. I want them to show the category name, not the value. So here in label options, I'm gonna uncheck value and I'm gonna select category name. And now you can see the, uh, the y-axis labels are showing up in the data label, so that's perfect. So now I can actually get rid of my y-axis labels. I don't need them. I'm just gonna click that and push delete. And of course, I wanna see these data labels a little bit better, so I wanna make these teal bars completely clear. So I'm gonna click on them, go over to Format Data Series, hit the paint bucket, and then go to the Fill drop down here, and I'm gonna go ahead and say No Fill. So they're gonna be completely blank. And now I have these beautiful labels right here above my bars. And now if I wanted to just use a bar chart like this, I totally could. You can have the labels above the bars like this and that's a great trick to do. Um, but what I'm gonna do is first, I wanna create those lollipops. So I'm gonna click on the blue series of data. And in order to get the lollipops, we need to work with the error bars. So what I'm gonna do is select the data, go up to chart design tab on the ribbon, 
go over to Add Chart Element drop down menu and look for the error bars menu. Here's the error bars menu. You have lots of different options, but I'm going to use the percentage. So once I click on this, you can see the error bars have popped up at the end of the end of the bars here. Now I need to edit them and I'm going to show you what to do. So just click on the bars. When you click on the error bars, the format error bars menu will pop up here. And right now it's set to both. I actually want to just set it to minus. So go ahead and click minus. You can see it just gives you an error bar from the tip of the bar and a little bit down. And then down here under percentage, you see it's set to 5%. I want to set this to 100%. That will put the error bar all the way down to the Y axis. So go ahead and update this to 100%, push enter, and you can see now the line moved all the way from the top of the bar all the way to the base of the bar here. All right, now this is how I'm going to set up my lollipops. So first, I'm going to go back here, click on the bar, so that the bar series is, is uh, activated. I'm going to go here to the paint bucket and click on no fill so that those become removed. Now I just have these little lines right here. Oh, and I see this little line, this little cap right here. I actually want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go back to the error bar formatting menu and I'm going to click on no cap. So we're going to get rid of the caps there. And with the error bars still activated, I'm going to click on the paint bucket here. This is where you can update the color and the thickness of the line. So right here, the width, I'm going to, it's set to 0.75. I'm going to increase that to, let's say, let's go up to three. And then I also want to update the color. So right now, it's just this default gray, but I really want to update it to this blue. So that's perfect. And now when you go down here to the cap type, join type and then begin arrow type and end arrow type i'm going to look at these these arrow types right here if i click on this begin arrow type you can see that the there's no arrow type selected but if i go here to select the round oval that is how the lollipops appear so you're going to go ahead and select that and now you have these little lollipops now the cool thing about doing a lollipop chart this way is that now you can add data labels based on those initial bars so if i click in here in the blank space you can see that the the bar is still there but i've just selected no fill so i'm going to right click on those bars add data labels and my, now my data labels appear on the end and i'm going to go ahead and edit those so that they match the color of the bar make them a little bit bold it looks like my labels are a little bit close to the lollipops. I want them to be a little farther away. So what I'm going to do is select the labels, go over here under the Format Data Label menu to the Size icon here. And what I'm going to do is under Alignment, you can see that inside each of the data labels, just like any text box, you have margin. So you have a left, right, top, and bottom margin. It's all set to 0.04. I'm actually going to work with the left margin and just click this up one notch and it should move the label over just a touch. Yep, so it moves it over a little bit to the right. Perfect. Right now, I love that spacing right there. You can also edit the text here. So I'm going to edit this. Maybe I'll increase the size a little bit. I'm going to make it bold. That looks really nice. Now, the one last thing that I did on my other, on my initial uh, lollipop chart was put the labels underneath the bar. So remember on the back end, this is just two series of data. We have this series of data and then we have this series of data. If I want to switch the positions of the label and the lollipop, all I need to do is inside the chart, click, uh, right click and then go to select data. And the select data source menu pops up right here. This is the over here under legend entries. These are your data series. And all you need to do is reorder these series. So right now survey rating is on top and label buffer is on bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and click this little down arrow. It says move down when you hover over. I'm just gonna click it. So survey rating goes below label buffer. And now you can see that my labels are below the actual lollipops. So that is such a nice way uh, that you can create these horizontal lollipop charts right from a bar chart right in Excel. You don't need any fancy software to do this, and it's super engaging for your audience. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. Definitely hit that subscribe button so you can get notifications on other Excel, PowerPoint, data visualization, and design tips and tutorials from me in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.